Hello everybody and welcome to my afterthoughts video regarding the second Rocky movie, Rocky 2. Man, as you guys already know, we absolutely loved that movie and I have to say, I mean, I really thought Rocky 1 was already a masterpiece, so I did not think that Rocky 2 would be as good or arguably even better. I mean, I was just blown away. This was fantastic. I loved Rocky 1 and absolutely loved, loved Rocky 2. So I don't even know what I should tell you guys as my afterthoughts, but maybe I just <laughs> tell you why I love that movie so much, you know? It all started with the little recap they had. I thought that was uh, brilliantly done because as a filmmaker, you always have to think, how do you want to set up your audience? How do you want them to feel before the movie even starts, you know? So you have to think about your first shot. You have to think about, you know, the opening scene. And of course you have to think about the music and what kind of mood you want to put the audience in before the movie even starts. And I thought Rocky II having that recap puts you right into that mood again. You are excited, you're touched, you're right back where Rocky I ended. So I thought that was brilliantly done. I loved it. And then of course soon thereafter you already have a great moment at the hospital when Rocky goes to Apollo's room and opens the door, you know, all bandaged up and stuff. When he asks Apollo, you know, did you give me your best? And Apollo, you know, the guy of integrity he is, he is honest and says yes. And I absolutely love that moment. It was such a truthful moment between two men. You know, there was no audience, no journalists, they were just by themselves asking an honest question. And Apollo, he, you know, he could have lied. He could have said, no, I just took you too lightly. You know, the stuff that he says later on to promote the fight, you know. But, uh, you know, he could, he, could, he could have planted some doubt in Rocky's mind by saying, oh, no, no, I didn't give you my best. But he was honest and I absolutely loved that. That was a great establishment of Apollo Creed's character again, so that was great. And then of course it goes on, you know, the uh, Rocky proposes to Adrian, that was very cute, at the zoo. And then he tries to make money with commercials, and of course that was a huge disaster. They humiliated him in front of everybody, really felt bad for him. And I was so happy to see when he finally dropped the stuff and walked out. And I was also happy to see that Adrian supported him and, and they walked out. So that was, a, that was a good choice, you know. And then interesting enough, after that, instead of going home and be all depressed about it, Rocky picks up a book and starts improving his reading. And I thought that was such a wonderful moment again because it establishes Rocky, you know, uh, as this very thoughtful, unique character. I thought that was great establishment again, which of course is great writing and great acting. And then after that, he tries to get jobs and he can't get any job and he ends up at Mickey's <laughs> um, apartment, you know, the trainer, and he kind of um, ventures the thoughts that he has fighting on his mind. and. Boy, oh boy, Mickey lands a truth bomb like nobody else can. He tells him that, you know what, your fighting career is over. You're done as a fighter. You don't even see right with your eyes anymore. It's, you're done. Oh. And, and to, to see Rocky's face when the reality hits, you know, and he realizes, yeah, the old man is probably right. You know, it's like, I'm done. It was horrible heartbreaking for Rocky and for the audience and it was kind of heartbreaking for Mickey too to see that especially when he asked hey can I at least work at the boxing gym you know and oh yeah boy what a tough moment and the old man says you know well you you kind of royalty there you know where is your dignity and that's where it hits you know like dignity you know it's just uh, he needs the money he needs to be around the, the, the boxing sports he so he accepts the job you know and then again I have to say him working at the boxing gym he has a great attitude 
he is, he's all pumped, you know, walks around and, and helps people out and he is not too good to work there, you know. He doesn't even mind changing the, the, the spit buckets, you know. He, he, I have to cross the street real quick. Woohoo! There we go. So he's not too good. He, he, he picks up the, the spit buckets, you know. But the old man was right because the respect was slowly fading, you know, and people start making fun of him. And then that newspaper article came out, the Italian chicken, you know, and Rocky, of course, as always, he keeps a good attitude and even says, oh, it's kind of funny, eh? But then he goes into the bathroom alone and you, you can tell how difficult it is to, to be in that situation, to hear people talk to him like talk to him like that it's again it's 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 heartbreaking so you know he goes home and talks to adrian to see if she maybe would accept that he goes back to fighting and oh boy there is no giving in with her i mean she makes him really really feel guilty you know understandably because she cares about rocky's health you know i 100 percent understand but then when rocky says that line Adrian, please don't ask me to stop being a man. Damn. I mean, that might not be a significant line for women watching the movie, but for men, we know what that means and, and we know how that feels. That is brutal to, you know, to, to make a statement like that. Don't ask me to stop being a man. And this, of course, go, you know, plays right into this toxic masculinity bullshit, you know. Um, and I'm not saying that there is no such thing as too much masculinity where, to a point where it could become toxic. You know, I can see that with some world leaders, you know, it, it can happen. But this is far, far, far removed from the masculinity that general men have, you know, in general life, you know. And trying to strip that away from men is just ridiculous, you know. I mean, who is going to run into burning buildings and save the people? Or who is going to war to defend the country when it's needed? And who is going to risk their lives to defend women and children and all that stuff? Or, or build the greatest buildings in the world? And, you know, there is something to say about healthy masculinity and and one should not attack that that's ridiculous that's like saying hey women listen up you know you should stop being so feminine you know i mean i don't think that would go over well either so that was a um, very very interesting moment and after that of course you know it, it gets even worse because um you know he has to sell his car and he doesn't get another job. He starts working at the meat factory. And then of course it gets even worse when Adrian delivers the baby. That's good news, you know, but then she ends up in a coma and that is probably the lowest point of the character. I mean, his fighting career is over. He can't find a job. He, the wife is in a coma and it's just brutal, you know, to be in that state of mind. And then, of course, once Adrian wakes up and tells Rocky, there is something you can do for me, win. Oh my God. <laughs> that was just amazing. That's like uh, getting a real huge shot in an arm, a shot of motivation, you know, one of the good shots, you know. That was amazing. And Rocky gets up and then we have this mind-blowing training montage. I mean, oh my gosh. How intense was that? It starts with this music and the, him running and exercising. It gets more and more intense and the exercises get more intense and the music gets more intense all the way up when the kids start following him. When they run after Rocky, I couldn't believe it. And more and more kids were joining in and the music was building. I have never seen anything like that. That was just fantastic. I mean, I, I couldn't believe it. They apparently hired about 800 kids to run after him, you know. That was just, my mind was blown there. And then he approaches the stairs. He runs up the stairs and the kids following him. And then when he is on the top and just jumping around, <laughs> all excited and motivated and pumped, you know, the kids around him, how could you ask the audience not share that feeling? It was just, 
it was just out of this world. I, I really thought this was this was amazing. I mean, I was pumped, you know. And then, of course, <laughs> it continues, you know. Then after that, you have this amazing fight. I mean, I was sitting at the edge of my seat. It was so intense, going back and forth and back and forth. And then you have the most dramatic ending ever. I mean, they knock each other out, you know. Or, or I guess, technically speaking, Rocky was um, knocking out Apollo and then also fell because both men were so close to unconsciousness they couldn't even stand anymore so they both end up on the floor and the count starts one two three and it was all about who's getting up first I mean unbelievable and of course Rocky is known to get up always it seems you know so he he manages to get up at the last count and therefore wins the heavyweight championship of the world. I mean, that was, hi, hi, hi. This was just incredible, I have to say. And then, you know, a little detail that one should not forget. There is a shot of Apollo Creed lifting Rocky's arm in celebration, you know, and again, it shows that Apollo Creed is a good guy. He is a good guy and all the, the, the showmanship that he uses, you know, and to talk down to him, whatever, it's just to promote the boxing. It's like Muhammad Ali, you know, promoting the fight. We all know how this works and Apollo did always a great job, you know, so but when it comes down to the truth, you know, he lifts his arm and, and he can respect Rocky for putting up such a big fight. And that was just amazing. And then, of course, you have Rocky um, addressing everybody, thanking God and thanking the trainers and everybody, thanking Apollo and, of course, his wife. And he says, Yo, Adrian! I did it! And she says, I love you. And that is the end of the movie. And Man, how could you not love that movie? Amazing, really, really, really enjoyed that movie. And I can't wait to watch Rocky III. I mean, you know, again, I have to say, it can't be as good as the first and the second one is almost impossible. So I'm, I'm ready to be a little bit disappointed, but you know, if those movies, the first one and the second one are solid tens, even if the movie comes in at the eight, <laughs> you know, most newer movie I watch come in at the three or four, so. I, I'm very excited to see it and I hope you guys are gonna be around for that. So see you then, eh? Okay, thanks for being here and Rocky 3 is coming. Bye-bye. <laughs>